It is lunchtime. Well, actually, it's well past lunchtime, but it's time I'm going to make myself some lunch. And to do that, I'm going to use a new-to-me pot and pan set from the company Silver Ant Outdoors. This is made from titanium. If you're interested in seeing this in action and hearing my thoughts on it, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Silver Ant Outdoors for sending the cook set to me. In fact, there's not just the cook set I'm going to share with you, but there is an alcohol stove with a stand to go with it all packed inside. So uh, it's going to take a bit of time, but what I'll do is I'll start by going through the pot and pan set as well as the alcohol stove and windscreen. Then I'll set up to cook my lunch so that you can see them in action. All right, let's start by going over the pot and pan set and then I'll show you the alcohol stove and and pot and stand for it in a moment's time. Stuff sack, nice stuff sack. All right, let's toss that aside. I'll give you some, just the briefest of information on this because I, of course all the specifications will be in the video description below. But we'll start with the pot itself. I'll just drop the pan to the ground for a moment. So the capacity, that's one of the big things here. 900 milliliters, 31.67 fluid ounces. So it is a good size pot, as you can see. Um, it is about six inches in diameters and not quite three inches in height. It does have this nice domed lid and the dome lid sits on very securely on top. It has a three drain holes right here. Personally, I would have liked to have seen maybe five drain holes because, well, I'm actually gonna cook some spaghetti or fettuccine up in a minute and I'll have to drain it and you'll see it'd be a little bit better if it had five drain holes. One thing I really like about the Silver Ant products is this right here. It is a wire spring affair that is acts as the handle for this. It folds down flat. Now it will stay down, there you go. And it will also spring right back up. No problem getting your hands on that to get it on or off. Doesn't ever get hot, or you can put a little stick in and lift it off. That's a great little design, that is. It has swing out butterfly style handles. Works really nice. It has a matte finish to the titanium. Yeah, just a nice pot, right? So and the nice thing is it nests inside of the frying pan perfectly. There's almost no movement at all once it's inside of the frying pan. Speaking of the frying pan, let's have a look at it. So the frying pan, you don't normally think of frying pans in terms of capacities or volumes, but this will hold up to 450 milliliters or 15.8 fluid ounces. And the weight of this one is 106 grams, 3.73 ounces. I don't think I mentioned the weight of the other, of the pot, 197 grams, 6.94 ounces. It is the same about six inches in diameter. In this case, we're talking a little less than two inches, inch and a half for the height. What's really nice about this is that the lid fits on top of this. So you can move the lid from the pot to the frying pan with ease. It also has the fold out handles as well. All right, pretty simple, right? Let's move on to the alcohol stove. All right, the alcohol stove and pot stand are two pieces. Um, this is just an extra piece I added. This is cut to the same diameter as the pots and I laid this in the pots for storage and transportation but the reason it's aluminum flashing. The reason I have this is I like to lay it on the forest floor so I can put my alcohol stove on top of it. I think it may improve performance maybe slightly by reflecting a bit more heat up but what it does do is it helps protect the ground so that's the reason I have it. Not necessarily it provides a little bit more stability for the alcohol stove as well. This is the alcohol Alcohol, alcohol stove pot stand and you can see it's spring steel this is not titanium like the rest of it it is spring steel and it has taken a shape but that will go inside of my pot and just work to run around the outside and it fits in there very nicely actually let's assemble that right now as you can see there is a small pop rivet right here fold the tab in and that's it so it is ready to go and uh, yeah so that would be air inlet holes at the bottom and there's a Another portion of crossbar to go on top, and I'll grip that. Now, I'm keeping my alcohol stove inside of a plastic bag. If anyone's ever had uh, leftover alcohol leak out of their stove into their pot, you'll know the reason why, right? It, the, taste, the taste is unreal. Uh, okay, so a couple of things in here. Let's put the bag aside. So this is how the alcohol stove comes. Another nice little stuff sack inside and a set of crossbars. Let me just reach in and grab this. And yeah, put that stuff sack aside. Now, I happen to have a Trangia knockoff simmer ring with me because there is no simmer ring on the alcohol stove itself. And if you want to do any simmering, and I do think I'm going to be doing simmering today, it's nice to have something. It doesn't have to be this. It can be something else that you can come up with that 
It works also as a snuff snuffer to snuff it out so you can recover some of the alcohol. So let's just take a look at the stove itself. Let me drop that simmering down. The stove itself is the classic um, ever new titanium alcohol stove clone or knockoff. So it has two sets of jets at the top here and down here. It provides a lot of flame when you're using it. Uh, and uh, yeah, now the other thing about this is, and you can do this, it can be a little awkward, is if you want to reduce the heat, you can lay your pot directly on top of the alcohol stove and it will reduce the flow of alcohol and flame and just the outside jets here will continue to fire. It's a little tricky doing. You have to make sure everything is running hot before you do that. Otherwise, the cold pot can sometimes snuff out the whole stove itself, but it's doable. But it's not especially stable when you do that. You have to do, be, be sure to be doing that on a flat surface. Okay, somewhere I just dropped one of these pot stands. Okay, found it. Found something else I wanted to show you as well. This is the other thing that was inside my plastic bag. This is just a, a little length of uh, cotton wicking or cotton cord that I use for dipping in alcohol, lighting, and then dipping into the stove to light it. Just, you know, if you don't have a, another means of getting your fingers, so you don't get your fingers too close to the flame. I guess that's the way I want to say. All right, so this is the titanium cross stand. The way this works is it goes on top of the pot stand and this whole thing sets down on top of the alcohol so very simple right so why don't we just put everything together i'll get uh, my lunch started and we'll show each of these in operation all right let's get this uh, lunch started i am getting kind of hungry so i've got a couple of things going on here uh let's see first things first i'm going to put the pan aside so i can get the alcohol stove lit Put some alcohol in it. Because the first thing I have to do is bring some water to boil to cook my noodles with. All right, that is going. Put those aside. There is the pot stand going on. Now, pot. Water. I have a little bit more than halfway full. Maybe more than I need, but uh, it's going to take a bit more of time to boil. On. Lid on. And I'm going to put a windscreen around this because it is a mite windy today. All right, nothing to see for a few minutes until that comes to a boil, and then I'll bring the next step. All right, water is boiling. Get the lid off. Keep this meal on the uh, ketogenic or low-carb side. The noodles I'm using today are edamame fettuccines, made from edamame beans. I probably have too much, but... Uh, well, we'll see. They have a nice texture, a nice flavor. High fiber. Fairly high protein. I think I'm going to need to get my stick. Now, here's where the trick comes. I'm going to leave the lid off because that will boil over very rapidly because there's not a lot of simmer ability. One little trick I can have is I'm going to pour a little bit of olive oil in that quite often helps keep things so you can see it calms down a little bit keeps things from boiling over it's going to take a few minutes for these to get soft the other nice thing about these ottoman edamon may noodles is they actually don't take very long to cook so all right we'll come back in a few moments time when they're done and i'll show you straining all right i think what i'll do before i strain the noodles is i'm just going to take them off and put them aside they're cooked and that was like just a minute or two that is a bit hot all right and the reason I want to do that is while I still have alcohol down in the alcohol stove is put my fry pan on, get a little bit of oil in there, just a little bit, because uh, next ingredient has its own oil, and that is hamburger, ground beef. So I have some ground beef here, and I want to get that in quickly, brown that up quickly so that I can add the other ingredients to it. You can see how hot that is getting really hot real fast, isn't it? 
Yeah, this is a bit of a trick. In fact, cooking in titanium can be a challenge. Look at the grease starting to catch. It's not the cooking in the titanium so much as it is the uh, heat control. You just have to work with it. And that'll take a minute or two to brown. All right, in order to move things on along, I took the uh, hamburger off of the heat, put it back in a little container here so that I can move on to my next ingredient. You can hear that sizzling already from the heat. A little bit more oil. And I have a few vegetables that I want to put in. Green and red peppers and mushrooms. Again, keep those moving. So far I have minimal sticking in the titanium. I know people don't like the idea of cooking with titanium, fearing that things will stick, and they will, if you don't pay attention. Basically what it is, is it's not that the titanium's bad. It will heat up very quickly. It'll get hot spots. But if you use a little bit of oil of some type, and you manage your heat, which means, in this case, lifting it off of the alcohol stove to gain a little distance from it, then a uh, little bit of practice, things shouldn't stick. I do have a little bit of browning inside of here, but my next ingredient, if I have enough room for everything, you may take that off. You can do a deglazing with a little bit of water or soup stock or a lot of things, I guess, to deglaze the bottom of a pan, but certainly nothing is burning, and that's what's important. Just got to wait another minute or two for these to soften up, and then I'll bring it back. Jumping ahead, my vegetables cooked down just a little bit softer, and I got the hamburger reintroduced, and now it's some homemade pasta sauce. I think I may have miscalculated the volume here. So really all I have to do at this point is very carefully mix everything together. Heat the uh, tomato sauce up or the pasta sauce up a little bit and put it on my noodles. Now just uh, in full disclosure I just strained my noodles off separately from this so that uh, I could just move things along a little quicker. But I'll show you the noodles in one moment. All right, that's not bad. I think the rest of the tomato sauce is all going to have to go in with the noodles on top. If I put the lid on that, that'll probably warm up a little tiny bit faster. Yeah, like that. All right. So there are the noodles all strained off. They took really almost no time at all. So again, another miscalculation. I did not bring a separate bolo. Everything is going in my pot and I'm eating directly out of my pot. Now, when I get this all put together, uh, we'll have a taste test and then we'll wrap the video up. There's everything nice and hot in my pot. I'm going to need a bandana to put on my knee here. One last ingredient. I put all my spices and everything into the sauce, so I didn't need to bring extra out, but Parmesan cheese. So put a little Parmesan cheese on top. That looks good. Put that aside. I think I can show you what this is going to look like. I think that's showing up there, isn't it? <laughs> it's a lot of food more than I anticipated. When I put the ingredients together in the kitchen, just scraping down to the bottom to see if anything stuck. Nothing is stuck in the pot at all. Mmm. Oh man. Sorry. Another taste. Oh, that is nice. Okay. 
It's been a long summer. I have not had a lot of opportunity to come out into the woods and cook meals like this. Fire ban all summer. Still a fire ban right now, in fact, until, well, until at least 2 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, and I've been traveling, so this is a real treat for me to get out and cook a full-on meal like this, not just some short uh, cut of a meal, something, you know, instantaneous. This is a good full-on meal. But if you haven't tried Edamon May fettuccine and spaghettis, uh, I get them in the grocery store. They're common. They're at Walmart as well. You can find them there. Uh, they, they're just a nice alternative. They have a little bit more texture than a regular wheat noodle and uh, they're much healthier for you. That's the reason I choose to eat them. Okay, but that's enough about the meal. Let's talk, talk for a moment about the pot and the pan set. So the things I really like about them, I like the fact that they nest together so well. I like the fact that the lid is transferable one to the other, pot to pan, so that you can use it on both. Um, they are a good size pot and pan, as long as you don't overfill them, like I may have done at this time. Cooking with titanium takes a little bit of practice. It's not the boiling of the water or the sauces, that type of thing. It's all about heat control and uh, using some type of an oil in your pan to keep things from sticking. And those are really, that's the, the tricks to cooking with titanium. Um, they're well made, they're well fitted together. If there was any improvement at all, I think I'd like to see is the domed lid I'd like to see five strain holes instead of three. Uh, I didn't show this on camera, but when I took it off to the side to strain it out, it took a long while for the water to strain out of that, out of the noodles. And that's just the nature of having three small holes. Uh, I could have lifted the little bit and go old school, but uh, you run the risk of losing everything onto the ground. So maybe if Silverant is listening, they could add one or two more drain holes there along the edge of the lid. That would be the only thing I'd like to see different. Now, as far as the alcohol stove goes, the alcohol stove, I, I'll put in some testing I did with it in terms of boil times and the like using that stove as well as that pot stand. I'll put that in the video description if you're interested in it. The alcohol stove is common. It's, it's a fairly common knockoff or clone, if you will, of the ever new titanium one made from Japan. The only difference being is there's no wick inside of this one. So they're much less expensive, but there's no wick inside. So the bloom time is longer. Uh, I don't worry about bloom times, to be quite honest. I light her up, I put my pot on, it's eventually going to bloom. It may take a little longer, but I'm not wasting any heat in the meantime, so I just, you know, start right up. It's not a, it's not a race to see which one will cook the fastest. They both work well enough. That little uh, pot stand works really nice for containing the heat, heat in that small area. There's just enough of a gap between the top of the stand and, and with the crossbars and the pot to allow for exhaust room. Uh, you still need some type of a, a windscreen when you're outdoors, at least you should have a windscreen of some type. And I did, I brought a little aluminum windscreen with me. Um, it works really well for boiling water, but as you saw, when it comes to frying things up, you really have to be careful using that to fry over. I could have used the simmering to reduce the heat and get a little bit more control. I tried to do it without, and well, I did it without, and it worked. Again, just a little bit more attention to what you're doing. Everything is well made. Uh, Silverand Outdoors, if you've seen some of my previous roof, have some unique products. They have some that are common to a lot of the uh, Chinese-made uh, products as well. And I've mentioned this before, they, Silverand Outdoors makes their own products in-house in China. They have their own factory, so they have full custom control or control over the quality of the production. And, uh, you know, they have a, a worldwide distribution. It is a multinational company. It's not a Chinese company. It, there's a number of company, or countries, uh, people from different companies with investment in this. We'll say it that way. Okay. Um, if you have any comments or questions about these products from Silverant or any of the others that I've already demonstrated, then please put them in the comments section below. I'll put a link to the last video did, I did with the complete Silverant cook, uh, not cook kit, coffee kit that I reviewed here uh, a number of months ago. I'll put the links to all of these items in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.